Hello reformers and welcome back to Floris Expanded. Now I have journeyed to Grunwald Castle as it was currently under siege by this particular fellow and one of his comrades who ran off in this direction over here. So hopefully we will be able to take them out and then head to Ibdeles Castle which is all the way down here. If I can orientate the map correctly of course yes that would be a good idea so let us now head in and try to take him down maybe we will be able to persuade him to join us because he does have a rather good relation with us 31 so let us now see aha here we go okay oh okay apparently he is still very loyal to his liege which is rather unfortunate but there we are. Maybe we'll be able to let him go as well. Now, one of you did actually let me know that you can change the commander in these actual battles, and that means you can take control of one of your companions, from what I understood from your comment anyway. So that is actually really, really useful for when Byron gets low on HP, as you did state in that comment. So thank you very much for that. I'm sure it will come in very useful soon enough. Or hopefully not, anyway, <laughs> because that would mean that I was completely bad and destroyed myself in the process, but yes. Okay, let us now move our units into a rather decent position, actually. Wow, we have spawned on a very good part of the map right here. Look at this, wow, we actually get a really nice hill to get our archers on. Very, very good vantage point right here. The only problem, of course, is that the cavalry may have some issues actually gaining some speed. Well, we will soon see. Hmm, I'm actually not sure whether I should continue to move our archers forward. I think we will. Let's move our infantry a little bit further forward and our cavalry as well. Okay, here we go. Yes, our archers are starting to deal some damage now versus the enemy. Hopefully they will show us their power even more so. Okay, let's get our archers on this hill right here so they can shoot through the trees. That should be very nice indeed. Let us get our cavalry actually following me. That might be a good idea. And then we may actually head in from the side. Okay, so it seems as though our infantry are charging in right away, of course. So now let us go in with our cavalry and attempt to actually do some damage before our archers kill all of the enemy forces. That would be a good idea, and there's some nice couch damage right there, and maybe we can get out our e-stock and actually do some damage this way as well. That would be very nice. Oh yeah, I am really loving this weapon, I have to say. That was a very lucky find indeed. It's really rare that I actually find a weapon that I am very comfortable with using, but this one seems to fit the bill rather nicely. Not bad if I do say so myself. As you can see, it's actually slicing through pretty much anything. Of course, it is a sword, so it doesn't really destroy shields that fast, but I would think it's pretty good for my purposes anyway. So, yeah, we'll probably be using this for quite some time, unless we can find something that is even more fun to use, which is highly probable, of course, but you never know. There we are. That was exceedingly easy, but I suppose that is mainly due to the fact that we spawned on an amazing hill, and that enabled us to rain down death upon them. And we will be letting this guy go, because at some point he may indeed want to join us, or at least try to defect and join us. That would be very nice indeed. And that is probably a good time to say that we do need more vassals, and I do agree with one of you in the comments that stated that as well. We may have to... Ooh, another slaver chief. Very nice. Yes, we may have to make one of our companions a vassal. But which one? Because Artie Minna and Jeremus don't get on, but they each have some really useful skills. So, <laughs> I am having a little issue deciding which one. I would really like to not lose any of them, but I suppose it may be inevitable, which is rather unfortunate. Okay, so, well, let's speak to Artie Mena anyway, and we will level his skills a little bit, and, yes, look at that, five in Engineer, that would be so amazing to keep. Oh, no, okay, 
Well, I'm going to continue to level his intelligence just in case, and I think we will get him... Oh, very difficult, isn't it? I don't actually know. Hmm. We have tactics. We have like eight in tactics, don't we? So we don't really want tactics for him. And maybe inventory management. I don't really think that's going to be worth it, is it? Oh, no. And iron flesh. I am terrible. I am at a loss, really. Okay. I hope that will be okay for now. And I think now we should pursue... Why are these people all leveling up all the time? I'm not complaining. It's just <laughs> rather surprising. Every time I go back to the party screen, someone has leveled up. Now maybe we can catch the other vassal that was over here. If not, then I will head to Ibdela's castle and hopefully take that. Yes, it seems as though they are nowhere to be seen. So I will head in the direction of Ibdela's and I will see you there. Okay, we are now at Ibdela's after having rested for quite some time at Jokala to regenerate our forces, of course, and it just so happens to be a siege tower. This will take 60 hours, even with five in engineering. Oh my, well, that's not exactly the greatest situation, but, ooh, we are actually gaining only 2,500 dinars. Whoa, that's actually very little compared to what we were getting before. I wonder what is actually causing this. Hmm. Well, I suppose <laughs> tax inefficiency isn't exactly the greatest thing. I may have to modify that a little bit. And of course, the wages for our party is quite a drain on our resources. But I would assume it is rather worth it, considering we are now sieging yet another castle and hopefully being able to take it in the meantime. Because as you can see, they do have two particular castles over here. And it seems as though Gazwan was defeated in battle, which is... Oh my, actually, two of them were defeated in battle. That is not good. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what they were defeated by, but I hope they don't come my way, whatever they were. Hmm. And it is now stating that there is a medium-sized group of enemies. I think that was the 160 that I saw off in this direction here. Hopefully he will not attempt to intercept us, at least. Ooh, I am... Oh, okay. We may be getting interrupted here. No? Okay, that was surprising. He had 319 troops. I really thought that he was going to intercept us right there, but it seems as though they were just a little bit too late, because as you could see, before we entered the screen, two of them were charging at us at full speed. So we may have some defending to do after this. So... Let us now lead our soldiers in an assault. That took three days to build that. Wow. Oh my. Okay, here we go. Oh, something tells me we are probably not going to be having the best time of things right here. As you can see by the layout of the castle, the Rodox have a rather significant advantage when it comes to crossbow nests and so forth. As you can see, that guy is perched on top of one of the battlements and <laughs> raining down all of his arrows upon us, or should I say bolts, and it seems as though we are having a rather slow time of moving the siege tower to the walls. Oh my, that is not good. Okay, well I can only hope that we actually do a pretty reasonable job taking them out with our archers and hope that our archers are better than theirs, but that is a tall order, considering they are Rodox and crossbowmen. They are very good at what they do, after all. And how are they still shooting me? My shield is up, how dare you? They must be using hollow point bolts, most likely. Okay, well, I have moved my archers a little further ahead to hopefully give them some better range on the enemy, but it does not seem that that is actually assisting us in any way, or maybe it is. Aha! Maybe they have now gotten into effective range and are doing some rather sizable amounts of damage. At least we are not losing any units, that's all I'm... Okay. W well, <laughs> I should really not mention that whatsoever, should I? 
Every time, every time I do that, it happens. Yes, okay. Well, I get it, game. It's okay. Well, at least we're losing a lot of units. It's reverse psychology. Let's let's try to use it. <laughs> oh no, it's probably not going to work. Or maybe it is. It's definitely going to work. Uh, we will soon see, won't we? Okay, well, I think what I might do is cut away really quick. And once the siege tower gets to the wall, which will take around another three or four minutes, oh my, a little bit too slow for me, in my opinion. But yes, I will see you soon. Okay, here we go. We are now ascending the siege tower and hoping that we will take no more casualties. We did actually lose Arty Manor on the way here, but hopefully he will not hold it against us if we take this without him. Let us now see how they fare in melee combat compared to, of course, ranged combat. They were doing a pretty reasonable job defending against us up until now, of course. And it seems as though my E-Stock is doing an amazing job at actually taking these level 4 units out rather quickly. And that is still very surprising to me. So, let us now get our throwing weapons out. And yet again, I did forget to actually equip my siege crossbow. So, I do apologize for that. Hopefully, in the next siege or similar situation, maybe a defense, that might be quite cool. I think Ibdelez is probably going to be attacked rather shortly by a lot of Rodok units, so we should get some time to actually equip it, and then we'll see how much damage it actually can do. That would be very nice indeed. And look at that, 87 damage, just from an overhead attack, that is amazing. Really, really useful. I am so glad and very lucky to actually have picked that up. Okay, come on. Let me get through. Let me get through. Yes, we need to clear the way here. Yes. Okay, here we go. Yes, okay, there we are. Very nice. And now perhaps I can do some rather fleeting attacks upon the enemies that actually get to this point. And hopefully we can up the front lines enough for our units to be able to get through that doorway. Because at the moment it is forming a rather artificial bottleneck for them to actually fight against, which is not great. So, yes, now we are flooding in. And we will hopefully be able to take out those crossbowmen over there that are raining down death upon us. As you can see, we are actually losing quite a few. Actually, never mind, we're only losing one. I was predicting that I was going to be losing quite a few more, but it seems as though that is not the case. At the moment, anyway. Okay, let's rush them. Let's try to prevent them from doing any serious amounts of damage with their crossbows. Yes, oh yes, our archers are now coming in and actually doing a pretty good job there. Yes, there we are. Very nice work, everyone. And it appears there is now a small band of Rodok units left over that we will be taking the pain to and they will soon see why no one should make war against us or at least I hope so <laughs> so let's go come on come on guys and I've actually just realized that I left my archers outside but I don't really think that they continue to keep that order as soon as the siege tower reaches the walls so I'm just making sure with that particular order I'm pretty sure they have an auto charge as soon as the siege tower hits the walls which is pretty cool so if you're forgetful like me then the game can carry you rather significantly and there's a nice block and oh he actually had a very nice parry right there and thank you very much cavalry you took him out for me, even though I would have preferred to have gotten the XP. <laughs> oh well, that's fine. Okay, so we did actually lose quite a few. We lost 25 to death, which is not exactly the greatest result that I would have hoped for, but we do get to take a few rescued prisoners, which is never a bad thing. But the only problem, of course, is that now we are being beset upon by a rather large contingent of the enemy's forces, and I will not be looking forward to this, I don't think. 
We will soon see how that goes. And ooh, Palantinus Rolf has upgraded his weapon with an E-stock as well. Not a masterwork one, but I think that will see him quite well through the various battles that are coming up. At least I hope so. So there we are. Okay, so I want to defer the appointment of a lord because I am trying to gather a certain amount of free property so that it will tempt any possible vassals to actually join us. That would be very nice indeed. So let us share the treasure. And it does not have a garrison. Well, I haven't garrisoned it, but it does have some troops here. Now, as you can see, we have Doge Graveth. He has returned with a rather significant force, I might add. Oh, no. Okay. Well, it seems they are currently following village farmers. Maybe not coming over here. Okay, well, we'll soon see, won't we? Okay. I will place these guys in the prisoner hold just for now. And I will level up a few of our units. And then we will see what action they want to take. And do not worry. I have remembered to equip the crossbow. But I wouldn't be surprised if I actually forget between me saying this and us actually going into battle. So I am continuing to talk about it so that I can actually remind myself. Who knows? You never know when I may forget something. So yes, there we are. Okay, so let us now speak to Rolf and get him leveled up slightly. I think we will go for one more in strength and another in power strike. That should make him hit a little bit harder at least. And there we are. Not bad at all, everyone is leveled up, and now I think we will head into battle. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. We are going to be <laughs> actually equipping the crossbow, which would be very nice indeed. Okay, so that should be very nice. So let's see what they do. Aha, okay, so they are actually leaving us alone. That is very puzzling indeed. I was almost sure that they would try to siege Ibdelez almost immediately. But seeing as they are not currently doing that, I will take this time to head back to Jalkala and hopefully restock on some food supplies. And we can only hope that they actually restocked. Yes, they did. Oh, yes. Great. And, yes, yeah, spending quite a lot here. Hmm. Okay. Well, seeing as... All that is left to do is actually sell. I will end this episode off here. And next time on Floris Expanded, I hope that we will have continued to keep Ibdeles for ourselves. And then potentially... Hmm. I am not entirely sure what to do next. Because I would like to take these two castles. But as you saw, Doge Graveth headed off in that direction. So I'm assuming he is probably reinforcing their garrisons rather considerably. So we may have some issues actually taking them. So, in light of that fact, or potential fact, we may head to Etrosk or Colmar Castle. Or, if we are having some issues with sieges, we will potentially defend something. So, I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.